and welcome to Perth City Talk. Fremantle, as it's known today, officially began in April 1829 when the ship HMS Challenger arrived in the waters of the Western Australian coast near the mouth of the Swan River and formally took possession of the land, which was then named New Holland for King George IV of England. Over 150 of Fremantle's buildings, described as charming heritage sandstone buildings, have been classified by the National Trust. There are over 3,000 heritage-listed properties in the Fremantle area. Fremantle's town hall is located in the center of the city. It's a classical facade contrasting with the modern slopes of the Western Australia Maritime Museum. Yet both capture the timeless balance between the man, the land and the sea. I guess the history of Fremantle goes back a long way, certainly long before white settlement. I mean, Fremantle has always been a place of trading, of commerce. Um, the, the stories go that um, because it was one of the few places you could actually cross the river, Aboriginal people from the north side of Perth and the south side, the, the Wajak Noongar people, would actually meet in Fremantle um, during summer months to trade, to trade goods and trade things because it was a key crossing point over the Swan River. But of course, in 1829, when Fremantle was, was, was first settled, and uh, Captain Fremantle, I should say, actually planted the flag just down here on Bathers Beach, and then Captain Stirling took um, the boats up, uh, up river, um, there was a sense that Fremantle was always the port city, the place that Western Australia connected to the world. And it has been that way, really, for the past um, almost 200 years. As a city of major cultural heritage, Fremantle's architecture is unique. Restored colonial heritage buildings built in the 80s are easily spotted. It actually has, if you look at place making around the world, Fremantle's actually got all the elements. So when I say that, we've got uh, ocean frontage, we've got river frontage, uh, we've got some of the oldest heritage stock in Australia in terms of the buildings, uh, very unique West End and completely intact almost completely intact. Uh, you don't find that in other cities. Much of Perth, more broadly, has actually uh, knocked over its heritage in the past, and Fremantle's managed to retain it. The boom days for Fremantle were the years of gold and wheat. At the end of the 80s, when the port was the gateway to the rich gold fields and pastoral lands to the east, the town grew quickly over the next few decades, becoming a city in 1929. Um, it's always been, the, the port's an integral part of Fremantle and that history and that trade, um, certainly f whilst um, further up River Perth has been some of the other parts of commerce, there's no doubt that trade almost has always come through Fremantle. So it's been, and then through the in industries that kind of um, came off that um, have, have been important. I mean, I guess the other really important thing about Fremantle when we think back is Fremantle was was a gold rush. Um, it was a very important period um, where in the 1890s uh, there was a huge investment in WA but also especially in Fremantle where a lot of the beautiful buildings we see today and Fremantle is still one of the most intact Victorian port cities in the whole world it was because of, of that gold rush period and we still got a lot of those um, buildings today because Fremantle was very for fortunate unlike Perth and other parts of Western Australia where many of those buildings were demolished in Fremantle they were largely kept so it's got a, it's a really beautiful intact Victorian port city. It's a Fremantle's port that has always been a focal point of the city's prosperity. A limestone bar crossed the entrance to the river was removed and the harbour was deepened as early as 1897. Uh, well, one of its great strengths is obviously its port. You know, it's a maritime, historic uh, city. Uh, what people really love about it is that it's very much of a human scale. They like to see the history in the buildings um, and uh, they like being by the river and uh, by the ocean. But they are concerned about uh, the cost of living here, cost of housing, um, and the fact that the retail environment is um, pretty poor. There was a sense that Fremantle was always the port city, the place that Western Australia connected to the world and it has been that way really for the past um, almost 200 years as it's been a major trading point to the rest of the world from, from here in Fremantle. So it remains a really significant economic centre, um, one in which there is a growing amount of trade coming, coming through Fremantle. Um, that, that's changed significantly when the inner harbour was built, when they blasted out 
the, um, the, the mouth to the Swan River and created, um, and see why I kind of designed the harbour and they created the harbour that's still the main harbour of Western Australia today. Well, the thing that has to come out of it is that as part of the sale agreement, it's going to still be a working port and obviously it's a very important part of underpinning the economy, not just at a local level, but at a regional and state level as well. Fremantle Port is a very important asset to Western Australia. Fremantle Harbour is Western Australia's largest and busiest general cargo and an important historical site. The NR Harbour handles a large volume of sea containers, vehicle imports and livestock exports cruise shipping and naval visits, and operates 24 hours a day. So a new five years economic plan, the Fremantle Economic Development Strategy 2015-20 has seen light. A number of objectives are outlined in the strategy, including that by 2020, Fremantle will be recognized as the primary center under the state government direction's 2031 planning framework. Um, from 2015 all the way through to 2020 um, builds on our, la our latest plan, the, the economic development strategy for the last five years, um, from 2010 until, until now, actually won um, the Premier's award um, in terms of uh, um, a good strategy that, that local governments should be doing. Uh, because in many ways it builds on that and what's at the heart of these plans is about making Fremantle continue to be Perth's second city. A place which is economically vibrant, has people, lots of people living here, and lots of and lots of economic activity going on, and that's that's a really important part of where we want Fremantle to be going. So, it's a plan that's around activating the place and and um, m making the streets more more vibrant, but also uh, providing a longer term. Uh, process around attracting new businesses into Fremantle and those kinds of things as well. In many ways we set up the foundations for Fremantle's economic development. Very much at the heart of that was around we had to change our planning scheme to enable that there was more, um, it enabled some higher buildings in key parts of the, of the city and we are quite careful to do that in a way that didn't damage the Fremantle's heritage building stock but actually focused more on where there was already I think um, a lot of scope for new development, really in the, in, in the less attractive 1960s and 70s parts of, of Fremantle. So. so we've got a project running called Future Freer, of which the local governments, both uh, Fremantle and East Fremantle, are funders, along with the Chamber of Commerce and a number of under, other businesses here, including the port. So our role is to be an independent organisation to come and collect the facts and figures about how Fremantle's faring now in terms of how does it fare across metropolitan Perth and how does it fare with other port cities and then talk about well what does that mean uh, for the future of Fremantle as a region so we're taking very much that regional approach so we're not trying to replicate the work of the city government we're looking at Fremantle as a region. There are also a strong emphasis on attracting more people and investment into Fremantle by ensuring if Fremantle remains unique in its offerings and that investors are kept informed of opportunities. But where the homeless and the Fremantle included somehow in this five years economic plan, is there any path or track to get into a solution? Homeless issued raised, and it is a whole of community responsibility. Fremantle's already relatively well served by St Pat's in terms of its um, residential and services um, provision, and they do a great job. So if anything, we would hope that someone like St Pat's could expand their role in Fremantle. We offer a broad range of services, so we have over 170 beds in the Greater Fremantle area. Those are beds for men, women, families, uh, people in crisis in general. And it's a whole range of different accommodations. Some of it's supported by caseworkers, some of it's independent living accommodation, depends on the situation of the client. Uh, we also offer a meal service in this room. On a daily basis, we offer a full, fully staffed healthcare service, uh, five days a week, fully staffed by volunteer health professionals. Uh, we also uh, offer emergency relief, and that's in the form of grocery vouchers, clothing, shoes, uh, toiletries, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, so you've seen an explosion in the in the cost of rent. You know, I know I'm a renter myself, and I know that you know, 10 years ago or even seven years ago, I could rent a house for half the price 
the, the price I have to pay now. So obviously we're seeing a different kind of client come in. So when in the past it was generally single men who might have um, addiction problems or they might have mental illness, we're still seeing those people, but we're also seeing people who are just falling through the cracks because they can't afford to pay rent or they have to make a choice between rent and groceries or they have to make a choice between school uniforms and rent and all that sort of thing. So we're seeing, so the problem is definitely increasing. Unfortunately, our funding is the same, it's stagnant. So our funding is not decreasing, but when you have an increasing need, you can see that there's a gap there. And that's going to be one of our key challenges is around making sure that as Fremantle changes at the least fortunate within Fremantle also have um, the ability to, uh, I think, and get the assistance to get out of the situation they're in. I mean, I think for me, a good society is one where you, where the least advantaged are well looked after, and we certainly don't want to be in a, in a society where homelessness is, is common. And it is a real challenge in WA, not just in Fremantle, but in, in Perth and, and other major centres. So um, one of the things that, that I was certainly we're working with the state government on is providing, is getting more affordable housing in Fremantle. It's been one of our big focuses, is um, that every new development has an affordable housing component within it, so that we don't just let Fremantle become a gentrified area for only the rich people, but actually is a community that's diverse because I think that's one of the things I like about Fremantle is that it's got people of all incomes and all ages all, all, all mixed together and, and by mandating diverse housing and affordable housing and all new developments I think we can get towards that. I guess the economic development strategy or plan that we've, we've embarked on is about strengthening the economy. So, so when we say that I guess uh, if you run a business you actually want to make money don't you so um, it, it's important that we as a local government provide the framework for that to occur and that means making sure there's foot traffic in front of the retail businesses because they rely on foot traffic, um, making sure there's the right style of accommodation available for office workers um, and making sure the resident population is large enough to support the businesses as well. This plan will see high-rise developments and a range of international stores, local boutiques and creative spaces. The main aim of City of Fremantle is to boost retail and residential development while maintaining the port city's creative flair. One would hope that the developments that are currently underway, um, primarily being residential projects, um, can add people, but then there might be a whole range of commercial projects as well, um, which will bring a differing style of architecture to Fremantle that's, um, that, is, that still maintain a kind of responsiveness to the place.